nothing but a test for my brother brains for my loved ones and my element this be my throne this my ring on the king this is what i represent i am this in the wind Forgive me for my sins as I walk through the rally. This what I'm about to begin as I go part to part. This blessed from God, you know what I am and you know what I lost as I fight. Hello, Christ Nagar, esteemed judges, teachers, and my dear friends. Welcome to Persona Prime, Ce a celebration of exceptional and extraordinary talent that define true leaders and visionaries. Today, we gather here to witness an unforgettable competition where our remarkable contestants will be judged on three essential pillars. Perception, Synergy and Insight. For that, let's welcome our three beautiful judges. Roshni ma'am. Bindu S ma'am. And Rega teacher, we welcome you, judges. By the way, I'm Janaki, Janaki Ranjit, and I'll be your host for today. Perception. The lens through which we view the world turning reality into a personal masterpiece. Attitude is not just a word. It's a way of life. Live it with purpose and passion. Your attire is not just what you wear. It's how you introduce yourself without saying a word. When your energy resonates with purpose, the universe conspires to make it happen. Find your frequency and shine. In the resonance of the moment, we find our true self. Tune in to let the magic unfold. Resonate with authenticity, shine with individuality, vibrate higher, resonate louder and on the stage. Judges, are we ready? Christ Naga, are you guys ready? Round, welcome to round one, Perception. Let's welcome our first contestant. It's none other than our head boy, Arjune from 12Q. He loves to speak, loves watching sports and enjoys watching movies. And if you want something done, Arjun is the one. Let's welcome Arjun on stage. Good morning, Christ Naga! I think this is the first time you have seen me do something like that. But you guys have seen me giving so many speeches here. Just like Janaki said, I love speaking. That was one of the reasons I was one of the four students from our school to compete for La Persona. But let me tell you, we won absolutely nothing. Just like that, many of you guys might work hard for an event, but you guys fail to deliver your best or you guys fail to get the desired result. That leaves you with two options. To stay at your home depressed, disappointed, and never to participate for anything ever again. Or you can take that failure as a motivation or as a fuel to cruise past the future challenges. Let me tell you something, people call me that I look like a skeleton right out of a biology lab. And if this skeleton can be the head boy of Christ Nagar, then you guys can achieve way higher heights. Thank you. Christ Nagar, that was Arjune from 12Q. Next, our next contestant, she loves going out with her friends. She enjoys listening to music. And she believes that good food is equal to good, good food, food is equal to good mood. And if you guys want recommendations for the best food sports here, go to her, she'll tell you all the recommendations. Let's welcome Namita P. John on stage. 
Unfortunately, so just to stay there in the introduction, guys. If you're seriously having any sort of confusions in finding out a place where you will get the best of biryanis or curry mantis or a Malayali's personal favorite ahangar parotta with beef curry, trust me, you can run straight into my DMs because I'll help you in suggesting the best places out here in our very own Trivand room. Because that will always be better than the random tomato pickup lines that will appear on your screen while you're starving to death. So, to all those people who might actually know me or to whom I'm not very familiar with, I'm a person who's neither good at dancing nor am I a pro singer. But you could see me lead a group of people with the worst kind of pulligo steps or scream until my lungs burst out, even if I go wrong with my lyrics. Because when I'm with the right kind of people, right kind of people, my friends are my family. They are the strongest supporters. They are the real reason why I'm here on this very precious stage, standing before you where everything began. So thank you, everyone. Hope I'll wish all my very best to all the other contestants as well. We'll meet you again in the next rounds. And Christ Nagar, that was Namita Pijon from 12P. Our next contestant, he says he's the best speaker and the best debater. Warning. But I mean, he is a debate winner, a quiz winner, and an MUN winner. Atwaid waits for no one and he has to add some weight. Let's welcome Atwaid Naya from 11Q. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Wait a minute. Get it how you live it. Ten toes in when we standing on business. I'm a big stepper. Underground methods. Got not Good morning, Christ Saga. It's me, yours truly, Adwait. And yes, I know I need to add some weight. But my weight lies in my achievements. And my achievements are certainly more than your average third grader. It's certainly more than the meat and Benny Engel's meat roll, but these aren't compliments, to be honest. That's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to give you an insight on the basic components of Advait Nair. What makes me, me, starting with my name, Advait. Advait literally means all in one and one in all. And that is the same sort of spirit I wish to embody in everything I do. I have never danced on stage before, but you saw me embarrass myself a few seconds ago. And if I can do it today, you can do it tomorrow. That is my advice to you. Just do it. You can and you will. So just close your eyes and do it. Now, about my personality. Add a few cups of confidence, stubbornness, and add a few more two teaspoons of, let's say, curiosity and quirkiness. Blend it all up, finish with a Christ Nagar touch, and you get me, Advait Nair. All in one, one in all. That is the exact energy I hope to represent in everything I do. Seven years back, I was on this very same stage for the Independence Day Assembly. Now, seven years later, a day after the Independence Day, I am here on the grandest venue which Christ Nagar can offer me. That is the spirit which I want you to do. Just do it. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Advait. That's Advait for you, CNS. Our next contestant. She could sit and read books for us. She likes to listen to music and she hopes to have a cat one day. She also likes everything chocolate. She also thinks she's a good dancer and she hasn't met a challenge. She hasn't taken up and bombed. Let's welcome Nashley Mediated from 12Q on stage. Today. Now, some of you guys might know me and some of you might not. But how many of you actually know who I am, who I really am? Now, I could stand here talking about how I love to read books, how I love to listen to music and about my obsession with cats. 
but all those things about johnny he said so what i'm going to say right now how i feel is scared and i know it may not seem like it from what i just did but i am scared and kind of terrified and very anxious but in the days leading up to this program my best friend she asked me exactly what it is that i am so terrified of and i told her i am afraid of the same thing a lot of people are i am afraid of failure see the thing is a lot of people hold themselves back from doing what they want going after their dreams because of this one possibility of failure so that is why i'm standing here today because i believe that chasing your dreams to no extent thinking the sky is the limit despite that of that fear is the true test of personality so what i'm trying to say is this is me nashley standing before you with my head held high saying christ naga look at me thank you okay christ naga enough looking let's move on to our next contestant she is a very very familiar person among us we could say sound she he she is our general captain known for her long hair she is known as broody chechi among us for playing brutus in last year's esposket let's welcome anushka pramod raghavan of 12q on stage as an ncc cadet but what did ncc teach me ncc taught me discipline punctuality to concentrate on the things i like but what i did is i wanted to make a difference and that's why i chose ncc to the people out there these lessons are for the people who wish to make a difference and you can do it recently we have heard the news that women are unsafe in our countries just about talking if you just talk between you guys will there be any difference but your one action can make a difference because i strongly believe actions speak louder than words so make your words your actions and prove that you are you and you not there is nothing to be scared of and that's me anishka with you you can count on me and and i'm here to tell that your actions can be powerful but use it according to me thank you and christ nagar that was your general captain next it's your boy andrew with you from 12q he loves music and loves making stories no he loves making music i meant music he is good at interacting and entertaining people If when Andrew is put to the test, he will try his best. Here we have Andrew with you of 12Q on stage. Hey guys, it's your boy Andrew here from 12Q. Such an energetic crowd from Senas just like always. Let me hear it once more. Okay okay guys I have one advice to you all is life will push you forwards and many people may call you many nicknames such but it's your duty whether you accept it or not. Just how I did I turned it into sweet sounds of music which is pleasure for me to hear and pleasure for those around you to hear. you must break out of your comfort zone break out of your shell and show the real you show the world who truly you are that's how you can overcome life's challenges and be chill at the same time my name is andrew my nickname is drusa but my friends call me dosha let me show you guys something <laughs> Put it 
I was walking through school thinking I'm a fool with my friends by my side showing off my style. And my sister calls me off from a distant far off. Yo, Drusa. Uh, uh, and my friends were like, yo, what did she call you? Mr. Dosha, and that's how I'm known as Mr. Dosha here at my school. Thank you and have a fabulous day. Thank you, Mr. Dosha. Next, we have a contestant who is not as hot as the sun, but is as fat as the sun. He loves listening to music, taking walks in nature, and reading about space. He aspires to be a psychiatrist and take the world to another level. Here we have Bala Subramanyam from 11P. Not as hot as the sun, I would say much hotter and I'm sure many of you would agree with that too. And it's not a psychiatrist, it's a physicist. Hey there, my dear Christagarians, how are you all? You all should have a perception about me back from the talent day. I was a senior assistant, but we all are like books. Most just see the cover. Some may turn a few pages. Only a few read the actual content. I'm here to show you that. Speaking wasn't always my thing, but facing my fears and breaking the bubble is the best thing I did with my life. And that's why I'm here today. And dancing, I thought I could never really do it until I tried to. So the thing that matters the most is how much you want it, how much determined you are for it. So with that in mind, let's connect, share some loves, and shoot our arrow towards victory. Thank you. Christopher, that was Bala Subramaniam, our physicist. physicist. Next. Next contestant thinks she is a very familiar face among us. She's our arts club secretary. She's an amazing dancer. She's known as Shruti to some and Vasu to others. And if you want to bring all of them to a place, she is the person to go to. Let's welcome Shredda PG from 12P on stage. Rajamandri Ragamandari, my amma peru talava nolu leru mestiri. Kalakarla family mari, ne gajja gadi teni dera podo windu rati. Hello, Christ Naga. See, I am a person who grew up listening to a lot of people trying to compliment me by saying that I am pretty, even if I was dark skinned. So it was pretty hard to be confident when you had to listen to such morbid things all the time. And that really affected my confidence in hanging out with a group of people. But I loved dance so much as a child. But I sucked at it. In fact, the first dance teacher who taught me told my mother to make sure that my foot never touches a dance class or my dance teacher would have a heart attack. Fun. But today, and I forced my mother, I literally forced my mother to let me go to a dance class and thank God she did. Because today, I have managed to make a name for myself as a dancer, however small it may be. And I am able to stand in front of a huge group of people and talk about it. If I can do it, then so can you and you can do a much, much better job than that. So thank you so much CNS for your time. We see you in the next round and I hope you have a great day. Thank you, Shraddha. That was Shraddha PG, keeping it PG. That was the last participant of Perception. Now, we, with that, we end off round one. Judges, are you guys ready to move to the next round? CNS, are you ready for the next round? Let's move on to... Karingali <laughs> Yelle Please. What do you mean? 
Okay, so now the boring horse is gone and the fun horse is here. Uh, hopefully all of you guys know my name is Sayed and uh, I'm going to talk about the round two. Unite, collaborate. Innovate. Uh, uh, unite, collaborate, innovate. Uh, one minute, one minute. Uh, unite, collaborate, innovate. This it's is elevate, where. Dude, it's elevate. Okay. Unite, collaborate, elevate. This is where one plus one is equal to magic. <sighs> magic. magic. Uh. Now. Who's uh, the best host you said? I am. Uh, I, wait, wait, one second, one second, one second. <sighs> Seeing that right now. Mutual growth, uh, the beauty of mutual growth, together yet unique. Mutual support and mutual growth. These are the uh, essen essentials of symbiosis. Essence, essentials, essence of symbiosis. Where differences? Uh, uh, where differences begin, where differences unite. Blend. Uh, where differences unite and integration begins. Demeanor is your superpower. Elevate your demeanor, elevate your life. Sorry guys, I made a lot of mistake. Stage fear, pattern, okay? So now, judges, are you ready? Rekha teacher? Bindu teacher? Roshni ma'am? CNS, are you ready? Now, I invite the first team. Oh wait, I didn't tell you the rules. Okay, so in this, one contestant, uh, teams up with another contestant and they are going to entertain us well, they have to enact a situation and entertain us and their time limit is four minutes now I invite team A <laughs> okay sorry sorry I have to say the uh, Round, right? The team. One Rambutan Aparata. Aparata. The Vaval named Manian and a sweet Rambutan are in a long distance relationship. One day, Manian set out to meet Rambutan, but she is under house arrest and fully protected nets. Power Manian. Heartbroken Manian becomes devastated and decides to kidnap her at night. The situation is. The failed kidnapping mission of Manian, the bat. Ugh, these strong winds. Oh my god. Why are they even covering me in this mess? Rambu, oh. where are you, darling? Oh. Maya. Why are there nets around you? What happened to you, darling? Don't you know? They already found out about our relationship. What? You told them? No, why would I even tell them? Uh, don't even have proper sense to even identify. Uh. Why are you tied up? Because they are afraid of you. You Nippa, you cause of Nippa virus. They are afraid that their daughter might, might be spoiled because of all this Nippa virus and thing. I have virus. The only virus inside me is the love for you, darling. Oh, love? Oh, even though I might seem like a corona to you, you can't even see me properly, yeah? Ugh. I mean, it's daytime, yeah, I'm blind. Then come at night, why, why can't you even be there at night? Okay, I will help, I will kidnap you, alright? But first of all, we should come up with a plan. Let me think. Excuse me? What are you even doing? Ugh. I'm a bat. I can only concentrate when I'm upside down. Then come and concentrate at night. You can't even do a proper thing on here. Oh. You can't even see. Alright. Rambu! Mani and I will kick you out of here right now. Can you even see me now? Yes, it's night time. I How can am see I? you. Your savior is here, darling. You are no longer confined. I am here to save you. Come on, let's go. Can't you see the nets that's holding me? That's what I'm doing, right? I'm untying it. Finally, you and me, together, 
The Christ Nagar is going to witness the greatest romance between Rambu and Maniyan. Maniyan and Rambu always makes the best combo. I know that for sure, but... Oh, man, my phone is ringing. Can you check it out? Hello? Huh? Are you? Okay. What's, okay, what's Rambu, happening? Rambu, there's a small problem. Any For any problem, I'll be there with you, Maniyan. I have Nippah virus. What? I have Nippah. No, no, no. no. I that can't be possible. Nip there are two viruses inside me, but... Your love for me is so big, right? Come on here, darling. We can die Who together. Who are you? Who are you? Who are me? I'm money and you are darling. No, I Night don't Night time call, video call. You forgot me now. What is this? Are you Nippa positive? I am Nippa positive, but you know what else is positive? For, positive? No, My I don't want... My love for you. Bro, Please. The wasted pickup lines never works out on me again. Because I don't even know you. Who are you? Hmm. Well, see, guys. That's the moral of the story. Yes, when that's the chat, moral of the story. Read never your chat at night. They will cheat you. Never, never fall in love with someone who looks like a bad man, but never have even skills to even protect himself from Nippa virus. That was a very amazing performance from Mani Anand and Rambu. Next, I invite Team B. And their topic is the diaper baby conundrum. Takkudu Vava and his diaper have been thick friends for a long time now and are inseparable. Very recently, diaper and Takkudu Vava came to know that they were going to be separated in two days. The moment they shared, the, the moment they shared the happiness, the sorrows, the war, the flood, and the crisis are now going to be these mem those memories of the forgotten past. The situation is the last moments of togetherness. Many poco pants. Many poco! Hi, Takruava. Mommy? Wait, wait, no. Mommy? Mani Poco! Mommy says we're going to be separated. You're going to leave me? Separated? But what about all the times I protected you inside and outside? Mommy says those times are over. What? No, that can't happen. What about your rash? <laughs> you always protected me. Now who is going to protect me? <laughs> no, 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 don't cry. Manny Poco's here. Manny Poco's here. No. Maybe mommy will forget about you because apparently mommy is scared about some landslide that happened. Maybe she will forget about you. Forget about that landslide. Think about the landslide you put on me yesterday. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am getting flooded. I am getting earthquakes. I am getting. Landslides every day. I thought you liked me. What about all the happy moments that we shared? We had so many together. All that is true. All the times you protected me while I was sleeping and while playing and from so many accidents. <laughs> Those are nice memories we have. Yeah, we do have nice <laughs> memories actually. Wait, I don't want to leave you, Takuru Baba. No. Are you going to leave me now? Don't no, go! I, I don't want to leave you, no! No! no, no. Wait, wait! wait. Uh, mommy, no! You said two days! No! Help. No! Mommy, no! Thank you. That was a bra bravo, bravo performance by Adwed and Ashley. Next up, we have Team C, and their topic is Swasha Gosham Sponge Polyan. Amban has been a chain smoker for so many years now. His Swasha Gosham is full of smoke and fire. On his deathbed, the Swasha Gosham decides to have a conversation with Amban. The situation is the wake up call for air. You, 
രംഗനേട്ടൻ ഹലോ രംഗ ശ്വാസകോശം CNS over here i'm not telling something some other words aha uh, uh -huh. you were always <coughs> oof, oof, oof. and that's why i am black in color and you're what? blaming me now what are you do you know who i am i have cns you know right 14 stitches on my back and still no one was able to stop me you think this sponge like looking lung stand can stop me <laughs> i am like just like a sponge and soft but what to do black because of someone smoking habit so you mean you want someone with you ja i am always with you from your birth i'm with you always so each minute i take a puff you always absorb that puff so that means we both are connected with a puff yes whatever you do i absorb it in you oh that's good you see I'm always a Ranganeta, Ranganeta. I wanted a Ranganeta only in my life, like you. I'm always a Ranganeta in your life, but you always run behind that Rangan. Rangana, totally alicha onda lo. No, I am always with you from your birth. So, who is the audience? Tell me, who is Rangan? Me or the Rangan? I am always with him for the. Yeah, you can be my Rangan. I admit that. But are you sure you will be able to survive after my? Then smoking every day with Ranganathan. I am the I am on the verge of dying, but still I will be with you till the end of my life. I will always stay with you. Stop it! Oh, ki vaiya! Oh, Shwasa Gosham, you seriously mean that? Yes. Oh my God! Right, right, Ranganathan, Ranganathan. Hello, hello, Ranganathan. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah. Next fight, next fight, next, next place, where? Oh, send over school, right? Ah, I'll come now. Wait. Sorry, Ranga. I have a new Ranga with me over here. I want to spend time with her here at CNS. Oh, you want to know who the new Ranga is? Speak, Ranga. Hello. I am the Rangan. I am the new Rangan of my dear Amban. That's it, Shwasa Gosham. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. That was an excellent performance from Team C. Now the topic for team D is Fish Nirvana with Molly Chechi alias Queen Victoria. The year is 2030. British economy crashed and the country plunged into a civil war. People escaped to various parts of the world including India. Some of them safely landed in the Virinam port Trivandrum Kerala. On among them was Queen Victoria. They settled along the coast and engaging in fishing and kudumbashri activities creating a British street in Virinam. The situation is Queen Victoria now known as Molly Chechi is getting interviewed while selling fish in the Virinam fish market by a freaky new gen YouTuber named Brijesh Moon Oh god it is rather hot here in Virinam isn't it maybe i should be getting myself a bottle of water vandine thedum naan oru poovin mottu vannu nirikkamo ende komala ponmugathu hi Um, do I know you, good sir? You are Molly Chichi, right? <laughs> She is Molly Chichi. Everyone, see, we are today. We are interviewing Molly Chichi. I She has the best fish in the whole Virinam port. Oh, stop it! I am Molly Chichi, but I prefer to be called by the name Queen Victoria. Why Queen Victoria? Because I am Queen Victoria, you dumbo. You see, some of my decisions, for the lack of the better word, were terrible. and that decided me to have to flee my country because i started a civil war there and then i landed in india which i must admit i am loving because i get to sell fish here i love fish do you like fish and do you eat you? fish and do you, you want fish why did you never get fish for me we have molly chichi molly chichi is i don't know molly chichi is on a whole another mood today guys so molly chichi show us some fishes oh i can 
show you some fishes. See, I have so many fishes here, I don't know their names. I will never know their names. You see, that small one right there is a shrimp. I used so, to have that with my husband. Well, God knows what's happening to my husband right now. God knows. So, yeah. Someone I, knows, actually. Yeah. So, do you have Ayla? Oh, do you know Ayla? She used to be my servant back when I was in England. She used to wash my garments. I think you and Ayla should really hit it off. Have Ayla, I know Ayla. Ayla is so juicy, so tasty. I had Ayla last night. <gasps> How dare you? Everyone likes Ayla. Everyone has Ayla. That is such an inappropriate thing to say in front of a school. Oh my Lord. I am appalled right now. How dare you? So, uh, I want to buy some fishes. So guys, let's see. Let's see all the fishes Mr. Molochiti has. And let's also ask, how was your day, Molochiti, today? My day was fine until a Dumbo with a phone decided to come in and act like he knows everything about me. Guys, come and hashtag fish for life and I'm going to do a giveaway for the one who has the most likes. Listen, are you going to get some fish from me or not? Yeah, I want. I want every fish one kg each. Oh, every fish a kg each, you say? Molochichi getting on another mood, huh? No. What? No, 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 no. Listen, what? if I get enough money from all the fishes, then I can flee back to my country. And I can't wait for that to happen. She is a country, guys. So, so that's it for today. We have interviewed Molochichi and she, she was not a good one. Get it off my face, you big so Like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Oh my God. So that was the last time to perform. Now, that's it for Synergy. Ha did you guys enjoy? Hey, stop, stop. I always told her, her timing is always wrong. That's why you get it for La Persona. Understand? Huh. Now, to wind it up, that's it for round two synergy. Now, moving on, round three. Inside. Vandina Tedum, Yaro Rupu in Motu, Nivama Mirikama, in the Gomala Mugatu, Kanela Tede, Yan and Nayo Mandiki Pova. The catalyst that turns curiosity into clarity and confusion into confidence. The power to discern, distinguish, and discover the truth that lies within. Welcome to Insight. Round three. The bridge that connects the dots between attitude, <laughs> demeanor, and realness. In this round, our contestants will face questions from the judges. They'll have one minute each to answer each question. So, our first contestant is Arjun A from 12Q. Morning. Good morning, judges. Hi, Arjun. Hi, ma'am. Okay, uh, this is the first question to you. What does women empowerment mean to you? What changes would you make in your own life? And what actions would you take to support the women in your life, your mom, sister, our friends. Yes, ma'am. For the first part, I will take an example from a real life event that just happened now. The brutal murder of a trainee doctor in Bengal. From that news, we can see that our women are they're not even safe in their own workplace. If, if a woman is not even uh, safe in their workplace, then we failed as an Indians and India failed as a country. As a brother and more than that as a son, you know, when my mother, uh, when my sister asked my mother whenever can she go out at night, she, uh, my mother was always against that. So I was really angry. I always went up there and supported my sister, saying, why can't she? Why doesn't, why doesn't she have the freedom? Well, my mother replied, it's not safe for her. Well, then I told it's 2024, right? We, women, uh, women should be empowered. They should be safe. But still, my mother was against it. And right now, this disgusting news just proves that. And the another, uh, 
most uh, another discussing fact is that the higher number of sexual assault cases are taken place in Delhi, New Delhi, which is our capital. That means the, the women, the women are in India are not even safe in their own, in their own capital, uh, cap, in their own capital, in the country's capital, and that's just disheartening. Thank you. Good morning, Arjun. Good morning, ma'am. You were seen heartbroken, Manian, for not able to have the sweet rambutan. Could you tell me one important fact? If you could remove one emotion from the human experience, which would it be and what consequences might that have? Okay, one, to raise one emotion from the human existence. Uh, I will remove self-hatred. I mean, I consider it an emo emotion because you gotta believe in yourself. Wherever you go or uh, whatever thing you pursue, believe in yourself. Hatred is just a negative, it's a negative stone in that. At the end of the day, you are always your biggest supporter. So the only thing that I have to say to everyone present here is to remove that hatred from your existence and try to accept everything, try to love everything. That consequence or that output, I'm 100% sure it will turn out to be better for you. Thank you. Hello, Arjun. Hello, ma'am. Now, uh, you are in 12th standard? Yes. Yes, okay. That means you've spent almost around about 12 to 13 or 14 years in school? Yes, ma'am, 14 right. years. Yes. How? As a student of the final year in school, how would you face failure in life? I mean, just as in my intro, as I said, we, everyone will face failure. It's, it's something that is inevitable in life. For example, I love to speak, I went for La Persona, but I was not able to get to the third round. But before that, I would like to say that when I was first selected for La Persona, I actually tried to, even though I love to speak, I actually tried to back out from that. I, I, was, I thought I was never confident for that. And this same me was the one who was disappointed in not uh, being able to get to the main stage. That change in the mentality, that is a win for me. So just like that, even though you might, you, you, everyone might face failure, you have to look at the positive side of that. Every influential, uh, every influential people in the world, they have failed at one point or not. Albert Einstein, Elon Musk, etc., etc. So failure is a stepping stone to, stepping stone to success, and that's all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Arjun. Christnagar, that was your head boy, Arjun. Our next contestant is Namita P. John from 12P. Good morning, Namita. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, my question is, what are your thoughts on impact of selfies? On selfies. Selfies, selfies, selfies. Selfie. Mm, yes. On self-esteem. Do you believe that they have a positive effect or negative effect on the individual's well-being? Um, uh, you asked me about selfies, hmm. right? Yes, I'll repeat. What are your thoughts on the impact of selfies on self-esteem? Okay, very much. Thank you for that question. So, if um, I'm not really a person who is very photogenic, so every time when I go out with my friends, the first thing that I would do is just back out from all the pictures that we take. Like, I'm not much interested in being in pictures, but I love being in videos rather than being in selfies. Even if you check out all the group photos that I have with my friends, I'd rather not be in a part of any of the selfies that we take because I look so weird. For, for sure, I look so weird. But if you ask me about self-esteem, it depends on an individual. It depends. It varies from one individual to another. That it can, it can be dependent or it cannot be. But I would say it doesn't really matter. It doesn't never. It never does really matter on one's self-esteem, like whether how how good you look in your photos or how how perfect how perfect you are. 
in your photos that you see, that you take on your phones, or Snapchat or something, with the filters on. But what I would prefer is that what matters the most, or what raises your self-esteem, is what's, your, what's in your inner mind. Your personality is what's more important than your personality is what would raise your self-esteem or that would um, uplift what your inner talents are. That's... Okay. Yes. Good morning, Namita. Good morning, ma'am. Um, you were the sweet Rambutan. <laughs> the question for you is, what if you could change one major event in the history Name that event. How would that event alter the present? Okay, so if I could, if I could change an event from the history, the first thing I would do is to remove the consequences that actually had caused the World War II. Because I believe both the World War, World War One as well as World War Two. Because you know, we, uh, we have. Uh, I have learned from my history sirs, Anil sir as well as Lakshmi teacher, both of them have taught me really well the consequences of the, both the world wars, but I feel that it was really, really unnecessary for many countries in our world to start over a fight, with was, which uh, I, would, I would also have to remind you about a fact called this butterfly effect. You know about butterfly effect, which is that a small effect can be a cause of something huge. I would put that same thing into your question that you had asked right now. So I believe if I, that could change, if we could change the wars, or if I could, if I could remove the, uh, the actual cause that was responsible for both the world wars, then I would actually remove them. And the consequence it might have on the future event is that we would establish, we would have actually established much friendlier relationships with many countries. For example, we have the war right now between Russia as well as Ukraine, which has been prolonged, which has been prolonged for many months. Like it's been, I hope it's over for 12, uh, 10 to 12 months since the war has started. So these all, all these consequences, all these, all, or even the war that's happening in Palestine as well as in Israel. So all these consequences, are always the after effects of something which could have been which could have been sorted with a fair and humble discussion. So that's what I believe. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Namita. Hello, ma'am. May you always be like as sweet as the rambutan that we saw. Let that sweetness linger on you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now for the question, it's something no, nothing to do with your rambutan, but still. Uh, today's modern age or the present age as we say, the modern times, is today's world, uh, the technology today, a master of human beings or has it enslaved the human race as a whole? To answer that question, technology has developed both positively as well as negatively. Yeah. So to answer, to continue from where I left off, technology has advanced in the past years both positively as well as negatively. It has various impacts on our daily lives as well, even from the alarm that we set up in our day, uh, for our morning course to the random goodnight messages that we send to our dear ones. Technology has always been a part of our lives, but I would say that recently with as, uh, just as how much this technology has been developed, it has also come to my notice that it has deep put, it has deeply, it has deeply down, degraded the human values that we have. For example, the more time that I, fend, that I spend with my family is during, only during when we have our dinner time. All the rest, during all our rest times, we would actually spend time in our, spending on our gadgets on each or um, every corner of our rooms rather than rather than spending a day or a day together discussing about our daily events but that's what i have to say about this because every time something good happens there's always something that's derooting it or something that's holding it back so in the same way if you take technology as also in the same example it has deeply i would say it has deeply um, pulled back, pulled down the human values, the importance that we give for human values. 
the much uh, the more we depend the more we depend on technology or any of our social medias the more d deeply reserved are we we are the more deeply reserved we are we try not to have not to have co social contact rather than we'll just simply text over i uh, simply text over people through uh, through our mobile phones we try more to be introverted so i believe technology has simply degraded our social contacts so that's what thank you thank you thank you namita thank you thank you namita pms let's hear it for namita pms you are just tiny matters when compared to what lies within you said by raf waldo emerson let's welcome her next contestant adwait naya from 11q good morning adwait good morning ma'am 11th standard yes you are taking science subjects yes like physics chemistry computer okay do you see science as just a subject in school or as a tool to improve your life and community how have you used scientific knowledge to make a difference now science can be considered as a global phenomena it isn't just a subject it isn't just restricted to do a few words on a textbook it's something that's prevalent all over the globe so my opinion on science which can uh, to be used as for the betterment of society is this there are many scientific achievements which man has made throughout the uh, throughout history which has improved society for example a scientific achievement um, can be let's say the introduction of a mobile phone maybe that isn't exactly related to science in its original form but it is a technology scientific technology has developed throughout the years and it is very prevalent today so uh, how have i used scientific technology for the betterment of society last year when i was in 10th standard i actually spent uh, we as a group uh, my 10th standard friends and all of us we spent more than 25000 uh, rupees trying to build a drone based purely on our scientific knowledge purely on our computing and our mechanical knowledge so that in that way i think we contributed to a, the betterment of society because building projects like these like drones which are also known as autonomous quadcopters okay, are used in the are you are they are used in wars which isn't exactly for the betterment of society but it has productive uses such as the transport of medic medicines from one place to the other the uh, transport of necessary items from one place to the other communication of messages uh, surveillance issues security there are many benefits on bu uh, building a drone so that i think for now is my major contribution in the scientific field for the betterment of society and that drone isn't really functional now but when it was it could have been used for the transport of medicines from one place to another and we even wanted to uh, make make provided with enough implements so that it can be used for the betterment of the wayanad case because um, we could send we could program the drone to fly all the way to wayanad uh, transport medicines for the needy people for the ones who are suffering so that so, so that uh, situation is certainly my scientific contribution and science is like i said before is a global phenomena that, and new discoveries are being made every single day so uh, recently there was this thing about superconductors people they had achieved the uh, limit of the superconductors or they had achieved how to properly make a superconductor there was a recent uh, news a few months ago so such scientific advancements are prevalent all over history and it will only keep on increasing and mostly scientific advancements are for the betterment of society that's all thank you ma'am good morning adwait good morning ma'am your inseparable loving hand towards the takdu wawa was simply awesome thank you ma'am now i want to ask you one very important fact about that diaper what are the key features of the diaper that ensures a baby's comfort or to save 
in a refined way that ensures that takdu vava's comfort now the bond between the diaper and takdu vava is inseparable uh, and as you can see by the way takdu vava cried she was very sad about me leaving her now why is that because of the comfort i provided her and how did i provide her this comfort now i think each diaper has a proper sanitary protection which prevents takdu vava's rashes which protects takdu vava inside and outside which holds every how do i say this which holds the produce of takdu vava uh, keeping her comfortable day and night so the diaper that is me helps takdu vava through her struggles her daily struggles okay good thank you ma'am hello adway hi ma'am good morning good morning uh you belong to the new gen today as like we call you the new gen okay what is your opinion about the phrase brain drain or uh, so to say most of the uh, families are migrating leaving their motherland what do you have to say about that because you belong to the present age okay all right ma'am now the main idea the main problem with brain drain is a national country a home country loses its resources its talent which is very prevalent in these days especially in our state and now the problem which we have to address we the new gen believe that there are more opportunities outside the country that there are better uh, facilities outside the country there are better facilities outside the country but for me i feel that that is not always the case if people of the new gen like me and my fellow classmates my fellow colleagues if we look hard enough we would understand that there are more than enough opportunities being presented in our country there are more than enough uh, jobs there are more than enough facilities to propagate us to be better for us to succeed so the very few people who choose to stay in india to work for the betterment of india are actually more likely to succeed in life now in foreign countries where people prefer to migrate to for example usa germany there is a lot of racism against indians there is lots of issues which migrants from india face there now there are examples where people do succeed after migrating to other countries but wouldn't isn't it better to work for our own country to develop our resources to make india a developed nation because according to the government of india we are supposed to be a developed nation by 2047 2047 that is more than 13 years of waiting that is 23 years of waiting sorry 23 years of waiting now why all, why are we waiting for almost a quarter of a century for us to become developed if all these people who are migrating stay in india work for india develop india then india would be a developed country today tomorrow maybe ne the next year at least that's i have to say. thank you advait thank you ma'am Thank you Adwait. CNS let's give it up for Adwait. Now, here we have Nashli Mary Ajit from 12Q. Good morning ma'am. Good afternoon Nashli. Good almost afternoon. lunch time, no? It's yes. almost sure. Sorry. It is. Would like to have your lunch rice, uh, sambar, avial. I prefer fried rice ma'am mm. to be honest. Fried rice. Oh, what I and uh, chutney will do um, for the time I can, being. I can adjust. Okay. I can adjust. Okay. What are your thoughts on the snack stalls near your school? Do they offer a quick energy boost and social hub, or do they encourage unhealthy eating habits? What do you think? Ma'am, um, as we are all aware, there are a lot of, especially near our school, there are a lot of shops not just selling snacks but fast food chains like uh, KFC, Subway, so many, and we have all been there. So we are all aware of that, and we have so many shopping centers as well. And closest to our school is one is one such snack hub. And as Ma'am mentioned, there are a lot of negative and positive sides for a shop like this being so close to the school. 
while yes, they do provide refreshments for the students to help them uh, feel refreshed enough for maybe extra classes or practices or something. And maybe even to, after practice, to catch up with some friends, to have a good time in general. That is all a good thing. But sometimes, having this outlet so close to the school can prove to be an obsessive kind of, it'll form an obsessive habit. Just walking past that, walking past the shop will give us the impression that, oh, we didn't go in there today. Maybe we can go and have a quick cup of juice or have a bun shawarma maybe. And all of this can prove to be kind of obsessive. We form an addiction to it perhaps, and that is not a very good thing. So overall, what I think is that while snack hubs are a positive form of entertainment for students, the students have to be responsible enough to manage this. Otherwise, it can be very unhealthy. Thank you. Hello, Nashley. Hi, ma'am. Now, the one-liner that you had said about yourself, she hasn't met a challenge, she hasn't taken up and bombed. Now, the question that I want to ask you is, are you scared to take up challenges? No, ma'am. I wouldn't say I'm scared. The process of thinking behind me giving that line was, I have taken up a lot of challenges. In the past year, last year, a lot of things I have actively participated in. For the Meet the Candidate program that was happening here, I, I went for the interview process, but I was not able to qualify. And for the youth festival, English solo, I like to think I'm good a singer. I went for that, and I did not get selected for that either. The process, my thinking process behind saying that line was, I am not afraid to go after what I want, even though it is daunting, and I am afraid of failure, as I said in my intro. I think that what is most important is to put aside that fear because of the, instead of thinking, what if you fail, I like to think, what if you win? What if this is the one chance that you get to showcase your abilities? So I think that that is what I meant by that line. Thank you. Hello, Nashley. Hi, ma'am. I, like, I was also planning to ask you something about failure because uh, I heard you say, I can't take failures, right? Something in your intro you said about not facing failure. You're not able to face failure, right? Um, I said I'm afraid, afraid, afraid yes. of failure, ma'am. It's something like not able to take it. Now, after school, you will be going into a huge ocean of a different... Uh, a cosmopolitan kind of a group, not as safe or secured as the school premises that we have, right? Yes. Now, how good or how confident will you be then when you have to face new challenges in life after school leaving? Thank you, ma'am. Um, challenges in general is very scary and kind of daunting, if I'm being honest. But Confidence is something that comes from within you, but not just from within you. What matters is the people you surround yourself with. Right now, I have an extremely amazing group of friends who constantly uplift me and encourage me to, even if I'm scared of trying new things and doing different, for going for different programs like this one, it was my friends who encouraged me to go after it. Because it doesn't matter if you fail, what matters is the things you learn along the way and the opportunity. So I believe that after moving on from 12th, when I go out into the real world, I'm still hoping and I believe that I will still be in contact with a lot of these friends and I plan to make a lot of friends, new friendships along the way and my family who are very supportive of me. So with their help and support, I am confident that I will be able to face new challenges. Thank you. Thank you, Nashley. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you someone else is the greatest achievement. Now, for our next contestant, it's Anushka Pramod Raghavan from 12Q. I welcome her on stage. Good afternoon, teachers. Good afternoon, Anushka. Paris Olympics was held recently. How many medals Indians got? Six medals. Okay. How many silver? One silver. And who got it? Neeraj Chopra. Yeah, good. 
And my question is, do you think India's focus should be on participating in the Olympics or winning medals? Should we prioritize the experience of our athletes gain and the sports culture we build? Or should we focus on achieving a certain number of medals and recognition on the global stage? What do you think? Ma'am, I always believe that participation is mo more than winning. Because why, when you are participating, you gain the basic experience that you need to face the world. Our athletes, they have trained a long years, maybe from their childhood itself. They are training to get a medal for their country because they love their country. And presenting India is such an it comes from our heart. It's a patriotism. And maybe we, know, we were not able to win the number of medals we expected. But we gave our best over there. And that's what matters. Giving the best of yourself. Being the better version of yourself at there. Even if you take in the case of Vigesh Bogart, she was just eliminated because of 100 grams of weight. But she's still satisfied because her, she defeated the world champion. And even if she retires, she can tell her uh, coming children that she defeated the world champion. And for her, it's participation. She represented her country in a global stage. And that it's what this matters. Thank you. Hello, Anushka. Hello, ma'am. The question for you is, what if every thought you had was automatically shared with everyone around you. How would you change your behavior? Actually, I'm a person who tries to keep my thoughts within myself. People ask me, why don't I express myself? But the thing is that in nowadays, when we express our thoughts, the people opposite to us... It's not expressing, it's automatically getting uh, shared. Through yeah. an AI, it's automatically getting shared. You are not opening your mouth. Then in that case, how are you going to restrict those thoughts? I would actually, I would uh, say that I would be the same itself. Because if I am not ready to speak up with this person, maybe there might be a reason for that. Even if it's get shared, that person should know that there is a reason behind my thought. I am not talking to that person. Maybe some of his words or her words may have affected me or mentally maybe I might be distracted. But I would believe that even if, it's, even if that person knows about it, it's, there is nothing wrong in it because it's the truth. I can't hide my feelings. If, even if I'm, uh, my feelings are automatically shared to others, let them know what I think about themselves. I am being myself and that's me. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, Anushka. Hello, ma'am. You had depicted or uh, you personalized the... Uh, personified, I'm sorry. You personified the lungs, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What is uh, your notion or what is your opinion for the verb uh, health is wealth? Health if I is? say the maxim health is wealth, how far would it be true, according to you? Health is wealth. According to me, what I strongly believe is that a person should be healthy. And if we are healthy, he being healthy is not physically, it's also mentally. If we are healthy mentally and physically, we may be able to tackle the challenges that are thrown in front of us. And that's all we need. We need the courage and being mentally strong and being mentally phys and physically uh, healthy is what we should focus on. Thank you. Shouldn't we concentrate to be more healthy? How, how will you do it? Like how would you remain healthy? Or what's your opinion about being healthy? My opinion about being healthy is that uh, we we may not be able to concentrate on our diets or the food habits we made in. Because all of us love junk foods, right? But uh, having junk food is okay. But it should be temporary, not permanent. That's how 
each and everything if you take we know that there is a control there should be a control to whatever you do if personally speaking morning i go for walk because i am an athlete myself and i say that uh, being healthy physically and mentally is what i prefer because if i right before a program i am not well just because of my carelessness i am going to blame myself i will have that regret in my life and i don't want regrets in my life so prevention is better than cure that's it thank you ma'am thank you krishna ka give it up for anushka pramod raghavan thank you anushka next we have andrew video on stage good 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 morning ma'am good morning andrew uh andrew what was yesterday's importance it was independence day yeah bindu teacher's birthday too okay happy birthday ma'am belated happy birthday <laughs> okay yesterday was independence day was it a day of reflection and patriotism for you or simply a day off do you think the significance of independence day is still understood and valued by your generation or has it become just another holiday ma'am truly speaking this generation does not value independence day at as it used to be independence day is something people first should understand the day we got our independence the day india was finally free but nowadays these kids they just wait for a holiday they just considered it as a holiday in august so okay let me tell an example i had many friends near my home they told oh next day is school finally we can skip school because it's a holiday it's independence day many people may hold a flag and show the flag show our india flag but they may not really mean it it's a problem wrong with our generation but at the same time there are many who value it let me tell you yesterday early morning when i came here to school what i saw was even the smallest children here at our band were doing and do it hosting the flag with father and they were that much engaged in it you should have seen the smile on their face they weren't here just to host a single flag they were here due to the true importance of our country and due to their respect for it so for those type of people of our generation i really hats off to them thank you hello uh, yes ma'am andrew or you are called as dosha dosha see you had said in a one liner about yourself yeah. that when andrew is put to the test he will try the best yes, now i want to ask you if someone pushes you so hard only then you work is it like that no ma'am if andrew is put to the test if there are challenges let me tell you an example here i was also a candidate for the la fest for the la persona i am truly speaking i had prepared my my full body my mind everything was fully prepared body for it but i wasn't even able to qualify the written round i openly speak and i openly tell that i failed that over there but i could have easily given up right i could have stopped i was over there put to that test i was already given a challenge and i accepted that challenge and i failed i accepted but that didn't stop me from coming here today i didn't think that since i failed here today i wasn't able to come today i can't participate what will everyone think that since i failed la persona will i be able to even stand on this or will i be worthy to even speak over here no i took that as another challenge thus i am here trying out my best thank you thank you thank you ma'am good afternoon good afternoon ma'am uh andrew now uh if you said if you were put to test you would take up the challenge right yes ma'am okay now recently we our state witnessed the natural catastrophe yes ma'am right now you as a person if you were given the chance to be there as a philanthrop or a good samaritan what would your role be or what exactly would you do thank you ma'am for the wonderful question first and foremost let me tell 
I am now, I am not at any position here, but still being here, I tried my best by giving to charity and here at our own school, we had a charity drive. I was able to give and provide for that. Secondly, if I was over put there to the test or be a good Samaritan, of course, I would even risk my life for those people. Because I am truly speaking, those people who suffered over there was nothing comparative in our life. Our life is something, especially our new generation. Sitting at the homes, looking at mobile phone, don't worry about anything, eat all day, drink all day. But that's not how we should be. You should come out of your house, do the work, provide for everyone, and show others who you are. That is how a good person can be, and that is how I will try my best to be. Thank you. CNS, let, let me hear it from Andrew with you. Thank you, Andrew. The only mistake is from which we learn nothing, said by Henry Ford. Our next contestant is Bala Subramaniam from class 12P on stage. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Bala. Uh, you said you love nature. Yes. So you often travel? Uh, no, I don't often travel. Hmm. I just take uh, short walks uh, in the museum and also around our school. I just love the trees hmm. and the wind. Hmm. That's why I take short walks. Which place you like the most? I haven't traveled around much. Hmm. So the only place that I took uh, hmm. to say a lot of walks would be Kanayakun. Okay. Okay, can you share some ways you connect with nature and contribute to its well-being? How do you ensure that your love for nature is not just a feeling? but a tangible force for good. Yeah. Ma'am, so uh, by the wind and how the trees, like when taking a walk around the nature, I can actually feel all the, all the emotions, the how. Taking a walk, you know, like it just gives us a vibe of the, the you know, like trees actually provide a, a lot of good vibes and while walking around in Kanyakuna, I got to know like how the trees feel. I got something from them that made me feel attached to them. And for the contribution from my side, I haven't really much contributed to any side. Selfless acts, they can be selfless acts. So what is selfless acts? Selfless acts can be that you are doing something for someone just out of the love for that person not for anything to be gained from that action or from that person. Self-motivated could be something that we are gonna gain from that person or from that action. We can do selfless act that, for example, if we are helping a friend for, some th for preparing an exam. Do you leave it as a message for the society? Ma'am, that was for my act here. I'm not really a YouTuber, but the reels, you are talking about the reels. They can be a lot educative. And nowadays, I am seeing a lot of educative reels on, on online. The, most of the people, they are giving life advices to people, uh, mental, health, mental health reels, and also financial reels. We can gain knowledge from this. When there are good and bad in everything. There may be some reels that are not at all what, educational or helpful to us. But mostly, nowadays, there are a number of reels that can be really helpful and motivating. If you could excuse me if I can interrupt yeah. you. Yeah. Not a general uh, opinion I wanted. I wanted what you, as a YouTuber, would prefer. Just for fun or for a message to the society? Personally, yeah, I would actually spread a message. Thank you. Okay, thank you. For Bala Subramaniam Krishnaga. Now we move on to our last contestant. I welcome Shraddha PG on reservations. We are just as smart. What we can I understand why reservations were made because women were not given the opportunity or chances that men used to have. I, I understand and I also understand that it is a thing even now. But I feel like what we can do right now is advocate properly about it. So. A need for reservation only comes in 
in places where it is necessary. Maybe in places where uh, women are not allowed education even now. So I would, that's what I would say. Hello, Shraddha. Hello, ma'am. Moli Chechi. That was a nice act. Thank you, ma'am. Now, one question that I would like to ask you is... Yes, ma'am. If you could know the absolute truth about anyone, how would you behave with that person? <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, if I find out that that person is a terrible person who's going around spreading rumors about anyone or everyone in general, then I don't think I will be talking to them anymore. I think I'll definitely keep them at a distance because that is not the type of crowd anyone should be associating themselves with. I mean, what is the point of spreading unnecessary hates if we can all just be friends or have a good time? We're, we're not getting anything by going around and telling people he's not a good guy. But, you know, if we, I feel like there is just I no I said not only of hatred. You can uh, come across a person who actually like you very, very much. Then how will be your behavior? Not only hatred, it can be otherwise also. I mean, I don't think uh, finding out if I... I don't think finding out that somebody likes me or is, you know, is, uh, really appreciates the person that I am, I don't think that would change my perception of that person. If, if we've always been friends, that, then we'll remain to be friends. If we were best friends, then we'll remain to be best friends. Yeah, that's, that's what it would be. I don't think there would be a difference in perception when it comes to that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, Your Highness. Good Queen afternoon, Victoria, right? Oh, it's great to greet the Queen Victoria, right? Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Now, let me ask you a question regarding the past that we had. Okay, ma'am. Uh, what negative impact did the British or the so-called past rulers over India leave for us? Negative impact. Did we have any negative impact on our lives or on our society or anything that Indians were left with of the British, Queen Victoria? I think you'll have a better answer. <laughs> Thank you. I think uh, the concept of racism was always prevalent in every part of a country, whether every part of the world. But when the British came to India, it, it developed a new kind of racism, and not just racism, or sexism in general. I would say that um, we can talk more about the casting system, casteism system. Uh, let's think about this. Uh, when the British uh, came up with the idea of divide and rule, they, uh, they made the concept with the idea of making sure that Hindus and Muslims would be separated. They tried their best to do so and a huge part of Indian community was able to resist that. But it still left a huge impact on our country that is existing even today. Because we can, I can be going through a social media reel or just a video and I will see thousands of comments of people blaming a person from another religion of, for something that might have occurred. They will have no idea of how that might have happened. But it, it has still left a huge impact or imprint on us. So that is what I would say. I think that casteism is something that has been left here by the British. I think the casteism, what you said, was already existing in India. We had the class distinction. Now, what, was there any visible impact left by the Britishers on us or on our lives that we have today or we believe today? I think a huge thing that the British left behind, I don't know if it's the answer that you're looking for, but I think one huge thing that they left behind is in terms of fashion. Because back before, before Britishers came to India, women in India used to wear saris in such a way that they didn't actually have a blouse. It was just a huge piece of cloth covering their body and they were happy and fine with it. But by the time the Britishers came to India, they introduced a system where, I mean, we have to remember how women weren't even allowed to wear their blouses in front of Britishers. If they asked them to take it off, they had to take it off. But um, I think that, that's one of the things that is still left behind is uh, their fashion. Because uh, you can see in videos about fashion or um, about saris in the past, you'll see how 
we have people talking about how women in the past didn't actually used to wear uh, blouses with sarees. It was the thing that was introduced by the Britishers because for them, uh, it wasn't, I, think mo it, I don't think it was modest in their community to not be wearing a blouse or be fully covered for a woman. So that is something that they have brought in and it's still existing. And we still shame for women for their choices of clothing. And so that's something I would say is, has left a visible impact. I think that is a little uh, uh, a wrong notion there because uh, Britishers never wore sarees, right? I'm not talking about sarees, ma'am. I'm talking okay, about okay, okay, uh, okay, clothing okay. in general. Okay, then you're fine. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Shraddha. Chrysler, make some noise for Shraddha PG. And that was our last contestant of this round. Honesty is the first chapter in the book of wisdom. I would like to repeat it once again. What lies behind us and what lies before us are just tiny matters that compare to what lies within us. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you someone else is the greatest achievement. The only mistake is from which you learn nothing. And with that, the round three comes to an end. We would like to thank our father principal, Reverend Dr. Fadiu, Reverend Dr. Father Matthew Tengumbali CMI, vice principal, OSHA teacher, coordinating teachers, house mistresses of each of the houses, our beautiful judges, and last but not the least, the entire Christ Nagar family for your support and cheer. May God bless you. May God bless Christ Nagar. Thank you.